friends, welcome to Smart Engine Tutorials. So, in the last video, we discussed about the MOS system under external bias, in which we discussed about the three uh, operating conditions in the MOS system, which were the accumulation, then the depletion, and the third one was the surface inversion. So, today, uh, the third one which was left out, that is the surface in uh, inversion, we will be discussing that, but before that, we will be talking about the term flat band voltage. So, before moving further about this topic, we just will just recall about uh, about the previous lecture that we discussed there. The three main components of the MOS system are the gate, can be metal or polysilicon. At the top, at the bottom, we have the doped silicon and a P-type, which is a substrate. And in the between, in the middle. The sandwich layer is the SI2 or insulating layer, which is which is sandwiched between the uh, gate and the substrate. So when all these three uh, individual components, if we bring or if we uh, stack them together, we form the MOS structure. And since the work function is different from metal and semiconductor, so as a result, when these uh, are together brought in contact. If we talk about the individual components and when they are brought together to form the MOS structure, this result, this work function difference results into a voltage drop across the MOS system. So this voltage drop, it partly appears across the SiO2 layer and the rest it can be seen at the silicon surface. The, surf, the silicon surface is the interface of the SiO2 layer and the substrate. So to... Uh, have a very clear understanding about this flat band voltage. If we uh, see the term flat band voltage, it means the voltage required to make the energy band flat. So we will move with the help of a uh, numerical, we will see this term very clear. The numerical here which we have taken is says that consider MOS structure in which it consists the p-type doped silicon substrate one SiO2 layer in the middle and a metal which is the aluminium gate so here the value of the equilibrium Fermi potential of the doped silicon substrate is given as U5Fp it is 0.2 electron volt and they are saying that using electron affinity for silicon and work function for aluminium given in figure which we discussed in our last uh, video when we talked about the energy band diagrams of the components of the MOS system, you will see that and with the help of that diagram we have to calculate the built in potential difference across the MOS system. So as we have talked earlier that the built in potential difference, it is a result of the difference in the work function of metal and semiconductor. So first of all, uh, we will calculate the work function of the doped silicon which is the substrate. We will have to calculate it because the work function of the metal is fixed for aluminium. So, we have an equation which we have already discussed in our, in our previous lecture of energy bands. In that, we saw how to calculate the work function of doped silicon. And in that, we saw that work function is the energy required for the electron to move from the Fermi level to the free space. So actually this energy is the work function for the substrate or the doped silicon. If we see this difference it is equal to this electron affinity Q psi plus the difference in these two the energy levels that is Q psi plus EC minus EF. This P suffix denotes that the substrate is a P so this gives us the work function for the substrate and this is the equation which I have written here. So work function is denoted by Q into psi s and it is equals to Q xi plus EC minus EF. If we want we can put the suffix P here to show that the it is a P type of substrate. And Q psi we will see the diagram which was saying that using the figure, the figure which we used where the three components was shown clearly. This is the metal and this one is the 
oxide and this is the semiconductor. If it, we have the, uh, at the top we have the metal, at the bottom we have the semiconductor p-type and the work function difference in these two results in the built-in potential. So for the metal uh, aluminium, we have the work function q 5 ms 4.1 electron volt and for semiconductor silicon, we have to calculate the work function at an equals to this electron affinity that is 4.15 electron volt plus EC minus EF. Now how to calculate this term EC minus EF? In the question it is already given Q into phi FP as 0 0.2 electron volt. So this is 0.2 electron volt and now what about this? So we have to know things. So the band gap energy for this silicon is 1.1 electron volt. Band gap energy it means EC and EV. The energy in energy band difference between EC and EV that means this total difference is 1.1 electron volt. And this EI so the intrinsic energy level and it is exactly in the middle or then the midway of EC and EV. So 1.1 by 2 is 0.55 that means the energy uh, level between EC and EI is 0.55 this is 0.55 and this is again 0.55 maybe you can in the diagram it's not very this EI is not in exactly in the center but actually it is in the midway. So EC minus uh, this EF is actually this difference is 0.55 electron volt this plus 0.2 electron volt which is already given in the question. So the work function of silicon is QZI plus EC minus EF and this value is 4.15 electron volt plus this value already talked about 0.55 plus 0.2 electron volt. We sum up all these quantities, we get 4.9 electron volt. Now the work function for the aluminium uh, metal gate is 4.1 electron volt. So we will calculate the work function difference between metal and sub substrate is u 5 minus q psi is 4.1 electron minus 4.9 electron volt. That is minus 0 0.8 electron volt. Now this uh, voltage or this voltage or difference which is the built-in potential because of this we uh, feel or we see the bending of the energy bands at the surface or at the interface. So if you want to uh, nullify this bending of the energy bands what we need is that if a voltage corresponding to this uh, value if it is applied externally between the gate and the substrate then the bending of the energy bands can be compensated at the surface and the energy bands will become flat. So this is this value is called as the flat band voltage and it is equals to the work function difference of the metal and the substrate which we calculated just above with the help of a numerical. I think it's uh, clearly understood now. Now moving to the third operating region of the MOS system is the surface inversion. This occurs when the Actually, we discussed about accumulation when the gate voltage applied was negative and it resulted in the accumulation of uh, holes in the surface. And then we discussed when we applied a very small uh, positive voltage at the gate and at that time it resulted in the formation of a depletion layer at the surface. Since the positive, small positive potential, it pushed away all the holes away from the surface creating a region devoid of the free charge carriers and then and hence we called it as the depletion region and uh, we haven't yet calculated the depth of the depletion layer yet we'll be seeing it in the next uh, video and uh, when we further increase the magnitude of this positive gate potential what happens uh, we'll see with the help of the uh, diagram here see the bending of the energy bands will be prominent because now the applied the gate potential is of large magnitude. So the bending of the energy bands will be more now. When we applied the small uh, positive potential, it was small bending, now it will be the large bending. And that too in the downward direction. So if we further increase the positive VG, it is the gate voltage, this increases the surface potential. 
that is the positive potential at the surface, the interface, and the downward bending of the energy bands will also increase in the same manner. Now, we can see it here. This is the diagram, a section view of the MOS structure. Here we have uh, shown that Vg is greater than 0 and that too large. This is the, at the top we have the metal gate, then we have the SiO2 layer and then we have the, the substrate p type and the substrate or the bulk we say the body is um, grounded and this region that is the depletion layer we already talked about in the second condition. So here you can see that the electric field direction is pointing downwards since uh, the electric field direction is always from positive to negative that's the reason that since we have applied the positive gate potential that's why it is uh, the direction of electric field is downwards and also the bending will also be downwards because they'll, uh, they'll uh, experience a, uh, a force which is pressing them downwards. So that's the reason here the bending is shown downwards. Now we'll just discuss about the energy band very soon and here you'll see the energy band diagram. This is the conduction band EI or EFP EV. I think terms are very clear and EFM. So here this dotted one is showing the uh, situation in the equilibrium condition when no biasing was applied. So now since a positive large positive potential is applied so the EFM has also moved down as lowered by QVG and here the similar case we can see that the bending is deep at the surface and as we can see here see EI that is intrinsic uh, layer uh, the energy levels in the bulk they are not affected much but at the surface you can see that the EI is at, at the surface is of lower value it has bent more than EFP that is the uh, Fermi level of the substrate p type substrate at the surface is at higher value than that of the intrinsic and this actual case is of the n type semiconductor when we do n type doping then what happens the uh, Fermi level it results exactly below the uh, conduction band and the intrinsic layer lies below it so at the surface what is happening the substrate is behaving like a n type substrate so we move uh, deep into it see when we apply a greater positive potential what it does it starts attracting the electrons from the bulk to the surface so what happens a layer of negatively charged or the negative free ions sorry the negative electrons they uh, come and they get collected at the surface or the interface and this results into a layer of negatively charged carriers and this is actually called surface inversion phenomena since we are applying the positive potential and we are getting a negative or the electron layer that's why we are calling it a surface inversion. So we we'll, uh, see here the mid gap energy level that is the EI it becomes less than Fermi level EFP on the surface so it behaves like an N type. The electron density is larger now at the surface than the hole density and this N type uh, region which is created near the surface by the positive gate is called the inversion layer and this condition is called the surface inversion. So we have already discussed here with the help of a diagram this cross section view as well as the energy band diagram and this thin inversion layer which is the collection of uh, electrons on the surface it can be used for conducting current here the surface potential has the same magnitude the surface potential the interface has the same magnitude but has the reverse polarity as of the bulk fermi potential phi f Fire is of the uh, bulk Fermi potential, but at the surface, the potential is equal in magnitude to this, but with negative uh, sign or we say reverse polarity. And also in this case, also we'll see a depletion layer at the interface or the surface. And if we keep on increasing this VG or the gate potential, the electrons will increase, but the depletion layer depth will not increase. Uh, since it has achieved the saturation uh, value of the depth. So we see that at the onset of surface inversion, the depletion layer depth is maximum, x dm, and it remains 
constant for higher VG to not further rise, but the number of electrons will rise, but the depth of the uh, depletion layer will not increase. Now, I think we have already covered all the three operating regions along with flat band voltage, and uh, we'll see how to calculate this depletion layer depth because numericals come on this. Uh, uh, a formula so we'll see how we calculate this uh, to the depth of the depletion layer and the maximum uh, value of it in case of surface inversion till then thanks and do subscribe to my channel and share with your friends that's all thank you